Hey, what's up? I'm Rakima. Welcome to Detail Dream, where the primary focus is to expose you to the expansive world of luxury goods for yourself and your home. Let me introduce you to a couple pretty incredible looking and smelling candles coming from the house of Paul Smith. This house is known for high fashion that I'm a fan of myself. I don't own any Paul Smith pieces in my closet, but I do admire the silhouettes of the designs, especially the outerwear. I was very excited when I seen Paul Smith branching out with his first collection of home fragrances. My initial thoughts when I seen these candles and diffusers for the first time was that even though they are part of the Paul Smith brand, it really looks as if they can hold their own as an entirely new standalone candle brand. Of course, this was just under initial observations from images. I still needed to smell and experience the scents, but I had a good feeling about them. These candles have been on my pickup list since the launch, which was in August of last year, but just haven't had the opportunity to pick any of them up. That's until the incredible team over at Twisted Lily reached out and asked if they could send a couple Paul Smith candles over. If you're a fragrance collector, you might be familiar with Twisted Lily. They carry the best selections of the more hard to find indie, niche, and natural fragrances like Jurjoff, Mason Francis, Kirk Jean, and Raja Parfums, for example. The same goes for the candles as well, like Mise en Cire, MFK, and of course, Paul Smith. I had to make sure they were contacting the right person, but I had the biggest smile on my face knowing it was because of all of you for getting Detail Dream noticed in the first place. And of course, thank you to Twisted Lily for supporting the channel and sending these Paul Smith candles over. They also gave me a promo code for you to use for 10% off your entire order using the code DETAIL10. I will also have an affiliate link in the description below. Help yourself if you're looking to add to your fragrance or candle collection. But what about these Paul Smith candles though? Just how good are they? So I received the standard 240 gram size and the very large 1000 gram size, taking the crown for the largest candle in the collection. And the performance that comes from these candles is just, hold on, I'm getting too ahead of myself. We'll get into the sense in a minute. But let's discuss the first thing you notice when receiving one of these candles. And that's the beautifully executed packaging. The unboxing experience is the same for both the standard and large sizes. The actual candle box inside the outer shell is your traditional flip top, but you will notice a nice striped design with the notes of the scent labeled on the back, just so you're reminded what to expect from the candle scent. And the color of each box correlates to the color of the vessel and lid. Great design touch to keep everything nice and cohesive. Stripes are also seen throughout the Paul Smith brand as a signature. So I'm glad to see that design aspect carried over into the home collection in some way. Okay, flipping back the lid of the box, you're met with the essence of something that smells intriguing. And there is also a small box that contains the glass lid to the candle, which can double as a coaster for the candle. Now, these rich, vibrant colored glass vessels are beautiful. They are the first thing that caught my attention. Even though they are just a solid color, the rich saturation on the tinted glass, complemented with the contrasting glass lids, make them stand out in any space. I think going with the contrasting color for the lids was a great decision. The vessel may have gotten a little lost if the lids were the same color, but as I imagined, these candles are exactly as they are seen in pictures. The quality is definitely there, and these are vessels you will want sitting out in your space for that added touch of decor. I'm most likely not going to keep the box that they came in because they're simply too beautiful to cover up and they have lids. I probably have have them sitting on my desk or shelf where I can see them. Paul Smith stated he didn't want the creative process to end at the fragrances. He wanted to place a lot of focus onto the vessels as well. He enjoys the combination of color and light and wants people to keep the vessels long after their life as a candle or diffuser. The minimal yet vibrant design of the vessel will allow them to blend into any decor style, as if you bought a vibrant color accessory for your desk for random items like pens, or a toiletry holder for the bathroom, or just a simple planter. I love the planter idea, or it might just be how they have it pictured on the site, who knows? <laughs> Let me know your thoughts on the vessels in the comments. Are you a fan of the vivid coloring? I love how they stand out in a simple yet bold way. Do you want to know something else that stands out? The scents. If you don't notice the vessel when you walk into a room, which is hard to miss, you will most definitely smell the fragrance scent. These candles will get you to notice them one way or another. The scent matches the overall feel of the vessels and the Paul Smith brand perfectly in my opinion. These scents were formulated to have their own DNA. They aren't trying to mimic anything else that already exists. The inspiration behind these scents are pulled from Paul's personality, his memories, his favorite places, and specific moments of his life. For his first home fragrance collection, 
I can understand why he wanted the inspiration to be so personal. If I made my first counter collection, I will also pull inspiration from my personal life to basically give life to the collection. He also had the help of two perfumers, I'm sorry if I pronounced these names wrong, Celine Burrell and Meve McCurtain. They really helped bring these scents into the physical world from these different periods of Paul's life. The scents were also formulated with raw natural ingredients. It doesn't list the wax type though, so I'm not 100% sure on that. From looking at the wax and touching it, it could be a blend of some sort. Maybe a coconut soy or a parasoy. It holds fragrance very well, which coconut and paraffin can do. These candles also burn very clean, which coconut and soy can do a better job at in my opinion. I really wish the wax type was listed on the site. Anyways, the scents, the scents, the scents. They are outstanding. As I said, very fragrant and a, and a bit punchy. At this moment, there are only four different scents in the Home Fragrance Collection, and I have two of them. For the blue vessel, the scent is called Early Bird, and the green vessel has the scent called Botanist. The scent of Early Bird is a tribute to the poetism of English rain, with notes of rain, iris, soft suede, and warm patchouli. It's described as cloudy mornings with rain falling on wet pavement. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not getting that rainfall feeling from this scent. It kind of reminds me of taking a walk on a warm sunny afternoon and you come across an iris field so you get that soft powdery smell. Suede can also come off smelling a little powdery but can carry some musk and leather qualities as well which is what I'm getting from this. And there's also the touch of earthiness from patchouli to balance out the iris and suede. But I'm not getting that rain smell from this though. It could just be my nose though. Iris and Suede are the star notes in this scent. It won't overpower the space with this overwhelming scent, but it does carry a bit of a soft powdery ambiance that you tend to get with Iris. You will pick up on more patchouli and leather touches when this is burning. But from the cold throw, yeah, Iris and Suede is what my nose picks up most. Speaking of the cold throw, I want to say it's strong, but it's not going to fill the room like a burning candle. So let's just say it's a strong moderate. You'll be able to pick up the iris and sway sitting close to it or walking past. And that's for the Hothro performance. That's a different story. It's a strong performer that does a great job in a large space, which is great for an 8 ounce size candle. But it also won't be overwhelming if you burn this in a small space like a bedroom or bathroom. I personally would prefer to keep a scent like this in the bedroom or living room since it's a softer scent with some warmth to it. And when this is burning, like I said, you pick up on more patchouli to complement this soft powdery scent you get with iris. From the scent notes, I was expecting a more floral focused candle, but I was pleasantly surprised when I put my nose to it. It's soft enough to appeal to a feminine scent lover, but also has the warm, deep qualities to it as well that will appeal to a more masculine scent lover. The suede and patchouli does a great job at making this a more unique scent that doesn't smell like anything else. It's a great scent to start the day with whether you're getting ready for work or getting ready to relax on the couch to watch a TV series or a movie. It is a clean burning candle and I haven't had any issues with tunneling or sooting. It does take a little longer for the top layer of wax to melt, about two and a half hours, give or take a few minutes. A slow burn is never a bad thing, of course. This will provide roughly 65 hours of burn time, which is standard for 240 gram or eight size candles. Such a beautiful scent. The other candle is the largest in the collection at an astonishing 1000 grams, which is equal to 35 ounces with over 300 hours of burn time. It's safe to say I will have this candle for a very long time, which I'm happy about because I want to experience this scent for as long as possible. It comes in the 240 gram size as well if you don't want anything this large. This scent is called Botanist. It's inspired by green veteran scents Paul used to perfume his first ever shop. It's described to smell like gardening on a clear brisk day with the smell of peppery herbs and fresh citrus. I'm not a gardener by any means, but the scent does make it feel like I'm sitting in the middle of an herb garden with the crisp aroma of freshly sliced citrus. Imagine one of those cool spring days with a nice breeze coming from a partially opened window. That's what I picture when I have this burning. It's not an overpowering scent at all. It has a gorgeous blend of crisp lemon, spicy black pepper, and earthy vetiver and moss. Now, I thought this was going to be, you know, just a good scent with a citrus top note mixed with an earthy base of vetiver and moss. It's much more deeper than that. It almost feels as if this scent was carefully designed like a Paul Smith runway fashion piece 
I can say the same for early bird as well. These candles have that same high quality feel to them. When I think of green herbaceous scents, my mind instantly goes to bright, vibrant basil or eucalyptus. This one, however, is the opposite. On cold, I instantly pick up this deep earthiness that's a bit dry. I can also pick up on a little spiciness from the black pepper as well that adds to the depth that this scent has. The scent is very easy on the senses. Don't get me wrong, the scent is quite powerful coming from a candle this size, but it won't overwhelm the space at all. The vetiver and moss is mostly what I pick up in this. So if you're a fan of earthy scents with a bit of spice to it, this would be an incredible scent choice. Out of the two candles I have, Botanist would have to be my favorite. It's something I would want to burn daily. The cold throw performance, is ab it's about the same as Early Bird. I was expecting it to throw a little more for its size, but I do find it enjoyable when sitting close to it. At times I pick up hints of spice with veteran moss, and other times I get hints of a fresh scent with veteran moss. When this is burning though, the scent comes to life and fills the space beautifully. The Hawthor performance is very strong, thanks to the size of course and the help of three wicks to melt the wax as even as possible and really throw the scent around the room. If you do opt for the large size, it takes anywhere from 4-5 to five hours for a full surface melt and that's for each burn. You will begin to smell this scent within 10 minutes of lighting. I can say the same for early bird as well. And as you would assume, it performs fantastic in a large space without any issues. This may be a little too much for smaller spaces like bedrooms or bathrooms, of course depending on the size of your space. Me personally, I would not have a candle this size for my bedroom or bathroom. It's, it's too much. This is strictly staying in the living room or my desk when I get ready to burn it. It also burns clean without any tunneling issues. Just take into account that for the large size, you will be burning this for a couple more hours than a standard size candle. I don't mind the long slow burns though. Light it, set a timer, and come check on it after 4 hours or so. Let me know your thoughts on these candles. I still have to visit the store in LA with the infamous influencer pink wall.